Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and iman. If you are new, welcome. My name is Nafisa. I am a Muslim life coach. I support Muslim women with relationship and mental health issues. So if you're interested in being coached by me, you can find out more info on my website. Here on YouTube, I make Islamic lifestyle as well as Dawa content. So if you're interested in that, then definitely make sure you subscribe. Before all of that, I am actually a teacher and so I'm now offering online home tuition for children between the ages of 8 and 18 in maths, English and science as well as psychology. And so if you're interested in tuition, definitely check out my website as well. In today's video, I am talking about trusting in Allah's timing. Oh, I know it can be hard when you're going through life and life is lifing and sometimes you're just like when am i going to get a break when is the trials gonna stop coming when can i breathe i'm seeing all of these other people getting what they're praying for allah you are answering their du'as when is it going to be my turn i've been in phases of my life where I've thought of that before but I've managed to snap myself out of it and I just want to give you some advice about how to trust that Allah's timing is perfect it's always perfect and it begins with knowing that there is a timing for everything Allah has willed a timing for everything and until it is time, nothing is going to happen. And you don't get to decide when that time is. But Allah decides when that time is. And this is the first thing that we as Muslims have to remind ourselves. That we don't get to say when the time is. Because if we got to say when the time is, a lot of us wouldn't develop that thing called sabr. We wouldn't know how or even what it means because we would instantly gratify ourselves if we had the say in terms of how and when things should happen in our lives. But Allah, as part of his test for us, he ordains a certain time and sometimes we have to go through difficulty until we get to that time. And sometimes it can feel like that time is taking forever. It can feel like when am I actually going to get a break? It's been 5, 10, 15, 20 years. When am I going to get a break? It's been since I was born. When am I going to get a break? And the first thing that I want to say is don't question Allah about when you're going to get a break. Know and trust that the break is actually coming confirmed. Why do I say it's confirmed? Because Allah says in the Quran that with difficulty comes ease. And indeed with difficulty comes ease. And he also says that after difficulty comes ease. And so life is about the ups and downs. Getting a break, what that means to you is getting relief from the difficulty that you're facing. But one thing we have to understand is that in this life, we're always going to be facing some type of a challenge. Nothing is perfect in this dunya. This is not Jannah. But you know what? Your suffering is not for nothing. Your suffering isn't for nothing. Every single day that you feel hurt, Allah is piling it up for you for the day of judgment. And that day will come when Allah shows you. This is the, all the, the results of your patience. When you wanted this thing so badly and I made you wait for it. This is the result of your patience. And then you will say to Allah, Oh Allah, in that case, why did you accept any of my dua at all? This is an authentic hadith. The one whom Allah shows the reward of all of his patience. The reward of all of his duas that he was making in that time of need. When Allah shows them the reward that they have gotten on the day of judgment, they will say, oh Allah, why did you accept any of my dua? Why didn't you just leave me in that state so I can keep making my efforts so I would have more than what I have now? But when we're in this dunya, it seems like it is everything. 
and we do want relief from the pain and it's okay to want relief from the pain it doesn't mean you don't have sabr that is a misconception about sabr that you shouldn't feel pain at all but it is difficult right allah says he will test you with a list of different things and he says it is indeed difficult except for those who do what who come to him who approach him in salah who approach him through sabr and sabr means do that which will help you to grant you relief but know that the final outcome is for allah to make the passing of your test here is if you're able to endure without having a negative opinion of allah if you're able to endure still holding on to allah then you are of those who have been successful because many are those whom allah has tested and he has made them very resentful of allah their heart has begun to question allah to hate allah stuff for allah to to be angry at allah because perhaps the heart has begun to feel the sense of entitlement and this is what we mustn't have in our hearts this sense of entitlement if anything what we should put in our hearts and this was one thing i play i put and said to myself when i was going through difficult times is that you know what i am the slaves of allah he created me he has every right to do with me whatever he chooses to he has the right i don't have the right to say i worship you and so why are you not giving me what i'm asking for that is not my right i didn't make myself he made me now in saying that to myself i then also had to remind myself that but allah loves me more than anyone and if my mom knows the difficulty that i'm going through and she wants me out of it then allah wants me out of this difficulty more than my mom wants me out of it and therefore allah loves me and so if he's not giving me what i'm asking for currently there is some khair in that there is goodness in that and so allah help me to trust you help me to trust you make it easy for me it is hard make it easy for me but help me to trust you and help me to have a positive vision of you help me to have a positive mentality a positive understanding of you yara but it is not my right to feel entitled to your blessings rather it is your right to do with me your slave as you please and when you begin to really understood what i've just said you will begin to find a level of contentment in your heart for your difficulty and you know as we all know for certain that this life will end and so everything will come to an end nothing lasts forever forever sometimes seems in this world as i've been going through this for the last 30 40 years it's like forever this world is temporary it is not forever whether we live for 60 70 80 years maybe like my grandfather you get very blessed and you live over 100 but you know what you will still die you are going i am going bottom line and so trusting that allah's timing is perfect is knowing that a time will come when he will give you that relief where whether it's in this life or the next but that relief is certainly coming whether it comes through the time when you see your good deeds or it comes when you're in jannah or it comes tomorrow or it comes the last day alhamdulillah in every situation learn to always say alhamdulillah learn to always say alhamdulillah learn not to complain learn to avoid complaining and say alhamdulillah making dua seeking allah's relief in your difficulty isn't complaint though because you're meant to do that so that isn't complaining complaining is relating stuff over and over and over again to people who can't do anything about it that's complaining when it's done repetitively for no other reason than just to complain and so learn to trust that his timing is coming but even if he doesn't give it to you in this dunya then you are still content with allah as your lord and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as his messenger and as long as that is the case you will pass your trial of this world and allah will give you something far greater in a life that will never ever end which is the hereafter so learn to trust that allah's timing is perfect perfect never wrong whether is in this world or the next it is always perfect 
Having said all of that, I want to conclude this video by saying that learn to enjoy each day that you are given. Every single day is a gift. Allah gives us each day as a gift. If you spend the rest of your days feeling sorry for yourself, the burden will feel heavier than it needs to be. If you spend every day feeling sorry for yourself, the burden will feel heavier than it needs to be. Take the good that comes with each day and enjoy it. Enjoy the positive aspects of your life. Learn to see other goodness in your life rather than only focusing on what you don't have. Because you know, the act of focusing on what you don't have and being sad about it and spending a lot of your energy on that, it is a link. It's a, it's a neural link that you're creating in your brain. And once you get used to that, even if Allah gives you that thing that you're asking for, the next thing will come that you want and you don't get that. You will focus on that. You never see the good of what you actually have. Complain, complain, complain. Then you get that at some point. Then, then there's something else that you want. Allah hasn't given you. Complain, complain, complain. It will always be a pattern. And so it's a pattern that must be broken now. If you don't want to be that person that's always focused on what you don't have in life, you must learn to break that pattern now. And the way to break that pattern now is the beginning to learn to appreciate what you have. And so things like keeping a gratitude journal. I know some people say writing things down, that doesn't mean you're grateful. Well, actually, it means you're actually focused and you actually have to think about what is good in your life. So there is goodness in practicing that. There is goodness in having a gratitude journal. There is goodness in being able to say with your tongue that you are actually grateful for something. And then there's following it up with your actions and doing the good deeds that is showing to Allah that actually, actually Allah, I am grateful to you for what you've done for me. And so it's a package. It's the acknowledgement and then the actions that follow as well that shows gratitude. And so you begin to shift your head from what you don't have to what you do have. And that is when you really benefit from life. Because there will always be something you don't have. If you're looking to get married, you haven't found a husband. When you get a husband, you're going to want children. And then when you're looking for kids, you have one, you're going to want to have the next one. And then when you have so many children, maybe there isn't enough money to look after them. You're going to want the money. And then you're going to want the bigger house. And then you're going to need the bigger car. And then maybe your husband, you, you want him to behave in a certain way. And then maybe he takes a second wife. There is always something. There's always going to be something. And you keep going, keep going, keep going. You realize you never lived a life. But when you learn that the last time is perfect and it gives you some peace of mind, whether it's in this world or the next, my reward is with Allah and my reward is coming. And you learn to breathe. You learn to say Alhamdulillah either way. Yes, you have your bad days, but Alhamdulillah either ways. And you learn to enjoy the nicer things that you do have around you. You will live a much more fulfilling life. And more importantly, above all of that, you will pass your test, inshallah. And that, that may be the key that you need to enter Jannah. Because regardless of what we are given in this world, the bottom line is, we're all going to go without any of them except our good deeds. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to realize and understand that his timing is perfect. May he grant us the sabr we need to pass our trials as difficult as they are. May Allah grant us relief from our difficulty. May Allah bless us with that which is good for us in this world and the hereafter. May Allah keep us away from shaitan and his associates. Ameen. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you share it with any brother or sister whom you know who may be going through a difficult time. I hope this video serves you well. Jazakallah khair for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.